Now, this is a flashback of a Benjamin Adekunle's interview on the Igbo that sparked us the base. The journalist Randolph Bowman interviewed Benjamin Adekunle, head of the 3rd Marine Commando on federal side in Igbo Chad during the Nigeria Biafra War for Stern magazine, and the interview was published on August 18, 1968, when Uzo Mazim Uzo put it on social media. It sparked all debates. The interview is published below. Saying, I have to kill the evils, sorry. Stern reporter Randolph Bowman spoke with general, the general of the Nigerian front troops. If you want to get to know the devil of Africa, just ask for Adekunle. He is the man who is responsible for the death of 100,000 Igbo people. The man who provided a, this trip to Randolph Bowman, the STEM reporter, was Mr. Ikba, the official representative of the Republic of Biafra in Lisbon. Mr. Ikba knew even more. Adekunle does not like journalists. He had a man from England who disagreed with him, shaved bad do an hour of push-ups and write 1,000 times. I am a crappy Englishman and don't have a say in Nigeria. Having been thus forewarned, forewarned the stern reporter flew to Portacourt, a big Biafra harbor city, in the midst of a swamp and in the oil field of the Niger Delta, and requested an interview from the devil, Benjamin Adekunle. Major Adekunle, 20, 28 years old, General of the Nigerian troops of the South Front sat enthroned behind the general's deck of the Share administration, which he had made into his main station when he took the Igbo city by storm on May 18th. Now he stated, saying, I am convinced you will report objectively and keep to our orders. We confirmed that. Okay, he beamed. The Germans just know how to walk. Tonight there is a fronty. There is a front party in my headquarters. You will come. An order is an order. This interview with the most important man in the Nigerian war took place at night. Whiskey and beer were abundant. Uniformed go-go guest played DJ. Adekunle danced and pet his mascot, a small mount goat named Ujuku. Ah, from the stern reporter asking, your friends in the federal government of Lagos call you the bloodhound of nigeria you are chasing a whole people you kill everything adekunle said europeans are awful they always generalize my troops have kept prisoners you have had a chance to convince yourself of this stern asked i only saw one prisoner a 15 year old boy adekunle said there there you are in addition i want to emphasize that we do not murder all people who no longer want to remain members of the Nigerian Federation. Stern said, does that mean that you do not want to want the extinction of the Igbos? Adekunle said, the nation which the Igbos founded under the name of Biafra on May 30th, 1967 is not a pure Igbo Federation. You Europeans should really know that by now, 7 million Igbos and 5 million other population groups are living now in the 80% overpopulated Biafra. Ibibios, Ijos, Calabaris, Ekios, Ethics, and Anangs. These minority populations in the Igbo nation have always hated the Igbos. Therefore, they jubilantly welcomed the liberation of their areas through federal trips. Stern asked again, Stern reporter asked, What are your troops doing when they march into a town around Portacourt, an area where most of the farmers are not Igbos? Adekunle said, we aim at everything that moves. Small children tend not to stay put for very long, from the STEM uh, reporter asked. Adekunle answered, I know, I have to myself. Stan, what will your trip, troops do when you get to the Igbo Atlant, that is, to the place populated by Igbos only? Adekunle said, they... There we will aim at everything, even if it is not moving. Wow. Are you racist? Adekunle said, you should know exactly where racists are. There is no such thing as racism in Nigeria. But why are you refusing to discuss this war with a European? Adekunle says, let me tell you something. When the Russians surrounded Stalingrad, did you request a land corridor from 
them so as to better feed your soldiers who were stuck in the port there. Of course, you didn't, and I can tell from your face that you think the thought of a land corridor to bring in food for the captured German soldiers in Stalingrad is a bad joke. Me too, where and when was where a war in which the loser was re-nourished one more time before the final loss. Why are you just calling for a land corridor for Biafra? Why aren't you calling for a land corridor for the Viet Cong? I have to declare, you Europeans are simply not competent. Stan asks again, what is happening in the European humanitarian assistance programs which were authorized through your government? Adekunle said, in the section of the front that I rule, and that is the whole south, from Lagos to the border of Cameroon, I do not want to see the Red Cross, Caritas Aid, World Church Delegation, Pope, Missionary, or UN Delegation. Stan asks, does that mean that the many thousands of tons of food that are stored in Lagos will never get to the refugee camps in your section of the country? Adekunle said, you are a sharp one, my friend. That's exactly what I am saying. Stan said, but you said yourself that most of the refugees in the parts of in the past you captured are not Igbos. Adekunle said, but there could be Igbos among them. I want to avoid feeding a single Igbo as long as these old people have not given up yet. Wow. Stan said, do you sometimes feel sympathy for the Igbos? Adekunle said, I have learned a word from the British, which is sorry. That is how I want to respond. To your question i did not want this war but i want to win this war therefore i have to kill the evils sorry the end wow so guys uh, this uh, uh this was what happened uh during the civil war and i'm sure this article was the band that was positioned for that uh, mission and you could see the way he was answering the question and no wonder it was called the black scorpion and a lot of people are really reacting to that you know, and sorry, excuse me. Someone says Adekunle will be regretting in heaven now, knowing fully where the war he fought for is still not ended yet. What an irony! The war is, is even more pronounced in the north, more now than the south. Can't the north and south be a separate countries with military and economic ties like NATO and UN? Now that there is this discovery of oil in the north. Someone says, do not talk about reconciliation as long as the reasons for the war is still here. Someone says, he is full of evil and God rewarded him with evil. This man adequately died a madman in a dilapidated house at Adelabu Suruleri. His judgment started here on earth. That's what somebody is saying. Uh, 1967 was a joke to compare what is to come in as, in as much what brought the war as still in existence. The truth must not be overemphasized. As Sam Amadi said in response, Frank Alim, you can only get past something that you have fully comprehend. The Nigerian civil war story must uh, be told to all. I have read so many books on accounts of the Nigerian civil war, as captured again by Urishe Jolomi. He said, but he likened the accounts by various authors to an entertaining masquerade. You enjoyed uh, the gyrations from a vintage position. I will recommend an account on the Civil War written by Nelson Ota, Rebels Against Rebels, former editor of Drum Magazine on the stable of Daily Times. Someone said, why is nobody talking about people Biafra's killed? Another, someone, another person says, no wonder Nigeria will never know peace. It is unbelievable this kind uh, of things happen this kind of happenings can never take place in this universe. Worse than Holocaust, worse than anything that that's ever happened in memorable history. Worse than Lucifer. If it is possible, let the publication of this war stuff stop. Even me and so many youths who are not born during the war, we always feel like revenging after reading the history. Imagine I just feel like weeping everything that has life in Adekunle village or wiping everything that has life in Adekunle say village both three hmm. so is heart of man youth 
those who are saying there will no there will not be peace in Nigeria will live and die without the peace. Someone says my father told me a lot of stories about this Adekunle. He was their commander in the South War against Nigeria and Biafra State. God help us Biafra out Nigeria without war this time around. And that's what somebody is saying. So guys, uh, you know, when all of these things are being said, when people are saying all of this, you know, it's just be as if it's a say by moonlight and now people are just trying to form things. All these things really happened. You know, when they're talking about what happened, you know, during the uh, time of uh, that war, that 1966 or to seven to seventy to nineteen seventy. You know, people tend to like, oh, you know, all those stories we used to hear in the Bible and all of that. These things really happened. And it's like we've not really learned from what really happened to uh, you know up to now because people you know, it's like things are just getting worse day by day. And it's like we are having more wicked people who are who are manning the, the, the affairs of this country. They don't just have sympathy. They don't just have there's no love. That is just the way I can see. It. Those ones who are really who are really saying that the elders, they are the leaders, they don't there's no atom of love. Everything about them is selfishness. Some have come, some are still there, some you know, they have ulterior motives, the ones that have ruled before now. There is no love. There is no understanding. It's all about selfish, selfishness. All about greed. All about personal interest. And that is why we are still where we are today. You know, this story is just like a kind of flashback. What happened? And we have not really learned anything. We have not really learned anything. And we are not moving forward. So, guys, I would like to hear from you what you think about this whole thing. Leave your comments below and leave it respectfully. Thank you very much. Bye.